Hi, I'm Jeremy. Welcome back to my workshop. Today I'll be showing you how I made this Danish modern media console that was designed to hold a record player and a TV to set on top. This piece will be going into my client's home that has both traditional and modern furniture. So I did my best to blend those styles into the design of this piece so that it could blend in. I want to thank you for joining me today and I hope you enjoy. So I began this build by breaking down my lumber. You can see little red marks on this board here where I've laid out where all of my parts are going to come from. I find this to be important in all projects, but especially ones as complex as this where you have so many different parts. It really helps reduce waste, uh, maximizing my material, but it also um, gives me some time to plan for grain and color matching among some similar parts. So you'll see here I've broken down the single board into all of my leg components, which will be my legs and frame that wrap around the front and back of this case so that they'll all look similar. And then I moved on to breaking down parts for the case itself. So the case is about 20 inches deep and I'll be edge gluing two boards together to achieve that width. And as always, when milling, I joint one face plane to thickness, uh, square up an edge, and then rip at the table saw to achieve the correct width. And with my boards milled to width and thickness, I moved on to figuring out how I wanted to glue them up. So I'm really looking for grain matching at this point. I'm not trying to hide the fact that these are glued together, but I do want the boards um, to look like they belong together. So I'm really looking for the grain on the edge of one board to flow into the grain on the next. And you can see as I fold this open how that technique works. And just to help with gluing these together, keeping everything as flush as possible, I threw a few biscuits in. Just keep things aligned while I put the pressure on. And after my panels had time to dry, I then moved on to cutting them to length. And then uh, the joinery on this is going to basically be a mitered case wrapped with a face frame. The face frame is going to become the legs. But the most important part of any mitered case is that the miters are dead on. Um, and if you can't get them exactly dead on, I would favor the um, toe of the joint to be a little longer. So that when you put the pressure on, you don't have the edge of the joint exposing a gap. Um, and then to get these miters to come together, I reinforce the joint with some dominoes. This adds strength and it also helps align things as I put the pressure on with the clamps. And with a case this big, strap clamps are just cumbersome. I can't move fast enough to get all four corners together um, and then put straps on. It would just be a nightmare. So I glued on some... Uh, glue blocks. There's temporary glue blocks with some CA glue. Put my, and then I was able to work one corner at a time, being sure it was nice and square and that the joint came together nicely. And I did put a little um, tape on the inside of this to prevent any squeeze out from messing up the finish. These panels were also pre-finished with one coat on the inside to help with that as well. And after pulling the glue off on the inside, I was able to knock the glue blocks off on the outside. And then I was able to move on to the joinery for the stretcher that will um, create the kind of the open drawer on this piece. So a sliding um, dovetail was a great option here. So set up a jig to cut the the mortise in the case for the dovetail bit and then finished up the stretcher at the router table. And as you can see here, these get um, a little glue on each component and 
with some light taps of the hammer, these slide right in. This does add a little strength to the case, um, but I like this joint mainly in that it can slide in um, from the front, which helps with assembly. And next I moved on to milling down some more parts. So I already had laid out where I want all of the, um, the back panel parts to come from, as well as the doors on the front. So breaking these down into rough sides so that they can begin um, acclimating. If they're going to do any twisting or moving once I break it apart, they can go ahead and do that while I begin working on the leg joinery. With my case glued up, I'm now able to work on the face frame and that will go on both the front and the back of the case, which will also serve as the leg to the piece. So I took my rough milled legs and milled those down to final dimension and then began working on the miters um, since this will be a mitered face frame. Um, and all I did is I cut my miters first, um, making sure they came together nice and tight at the corners. And then I marked everything to length and I kept working my way around the case. With the miters of the frame cut, I was able to place the frame onto the case and mark out for the lower rail and the upper rail, which will establish on the front of the case the opening for the doors and the pull-out tray, and on the back of the case, which will be enclosed for the shiplap panels and the vent panel. So as you see I'm doing here is I use my router to create a groove which will accept the shiplap and the vent panel. And then I mark out for the mortises for the two horizontal rails. And then I go back and deepen those. And here I'm cutting the grooves, the matching groove, um, the horizontal rail that will be on the back panel. So this groove will accept the tongue and groove or the, the shiplap panels and the vent panel. So I didn't restack my dado blade for a wider blade here. I just used the like 3-8 um, blade that was already in there. It took a few nibbles off the end to create the uh, tenons for these mortises. And in this scenario, um, I want to square up my mortises. You can either round over your tendons or you can square up the mortise. And I really wanted the flat bottom here to help um, precisely locate these uh, rails. So I opted to square up the, uh, the mortise instead of rounding the tendon. And a few swipes of a uh, shoulder plane, um, shoulder block plane um, fits the joint. I always like to leave it a little heavy off the saw so I can fine tune it um, at the workbench. The last uh, piece of joinery for the frames are the miters. So the miters themselves are pretty strong, but I needed something to help locate um, the miters to help during glue up. So I added a couple, couple of dominoes or floating tenons to the miters. And with that, I could do a little dry fit. And with that together, you can see this is the frame for the back frame of the cabinet. And with that complete, I moved on to creating the shiplap panels. Um, this is fairly easy to do by cutting a rabbit on each side, making sure they're on opposite sides. And then I could come back and do a dry assembly on the workbench to make sure I'm at the correct width for the for the frame. And then this could be done at the router table, but I like to ease off all of the edges, creating a little chamfer. Um, the only hard part at the router table is where the uh, where the rabbit is on this panel would be tough to get a uh, <clears throat> router bit in there to ease that edge. So I just find the block plane is nice. And I can cut all of these to length 
and create a little rabbit on the um, ends of the piece as well, which will fit into the rails. And the top part of this cabinet will house some electronics that need to be able to breathe. So I created this vent panel, which includes some um, slots and a larger hole in the middle. And I kind of just, this is arbitrary, but I took a little opportunity to stagger these slots to create a little interest. Um, it's a fun way to add an aesthetic element to the piece. And the last part of the frame or the leg assembly is going to be shaping the feet to this. So uh, to make everything nice and consistent, I created a quick jig by uh, first drawing out the curve that I want on the feet and then cutting that out on a piece of plywood and then gluing that to a fence. And I glued this in the middle so that the fence could be used on each side. And you'll see in a minute that I'm able to um, put this jig on each side of the leg so I'm never climbing against the grain, which would produce a lot of tear out on the leg. I'm always going to be cutting down the grain. So that's pretty important when you're making jigs to really pay attention to, um, especially if you're going to use that jig on the router table, to make sure that router bit is cutting down, or down the grain or with the grain instead of against it. So with my template done, I go and use that to mark the legs, and then I rough cut out at the bandsaw, leaving about a sixteenth of an inch. And then with a flush trim bit, I can make them all uniform. And the legs also receive a cove profile on the inner edge um, near where the doors will be just to add another um, kind of shadow line or fillet and a little more interest to the piece. And then I moved on to cleaning up all of my edges, getting those ready for finish and assembly. I like doing this part with um, hand tools and a little sandpaper. And I have to say, like a, out of all the different process of woodworking, this is where I can really get into a groove and I really get a lot of enjoyment out of getting kind of close and intimate with the different parts. And one of my favorite hand tools to use is the spoke shave. And I've heard a lot of woodworkers say that there's just something really satisfying about taking those really controlled small shavings off. So here I'm just easing the inner edge and then using a little sandpaper to knock the grain down. And with all the surfaces of the frames um, prepped for finish, so everything got hand planed and sanded down, I could apply finish to the um, to the chip lap panels, to the vent, and to the inside of the leg components. Um, this just helps when I go to glue everything up to prevent squeeze out from seeping into the grain. And then when I apply to finish, um, the finish wouldn't absorb. So I like to pre-finish certain parts when it makes sense. And then I moved on to glue up. So um, gluing up the ship lap panels. I created the grooves in all of these components so that they they were decently tight. You you don't want your shiplap panels rattling around um, on the piece, so they need to be snug, but not so snug that they can't move, because um, you might need to adjust them once the piece is together. So I did create some little sixteenth inch spacers here, just to aid in assembly and glue up. And next, I moved on to flushing up the frames to the case. So by placing the frame onto the case, marking out um, where the frame is a little heavy, I shaved it down with the hand plane to get it pretty close. And then I needed this to be close enough where I could add, um, use it as a reference surface to add these dominoes. 
So I added the dominoes to the case and then to um, the frame, and this will help align the um, two components when I go to glue them up. And before I glue them up, I add a, a tiny little chamfer um, on the mating surfaces, and this is going to create a little shadow, like a V-groove shadow line um, later on that you'll see. And the glue up was pretty stress free, so I did all the domino tenons first, and then added glue to the edges, try not to add too much so I don't have to deal with squeeze out. And then the frame just taps into place and gets clamped down. And while the frames are gluing to the case, um, I slowly worked on doing some veneer work on the panel that'll be used for the pull-out tray. Um, I was originally going to do a solid wood panel on that pull-out tray, but the tray is so thin that there's a limited amount of joinery in the corners of it. So even though I'm using a dovetail, the back corners have to be um, trimmed away a little bit for the soft close undermount um, drawer slides. And I thought that it might compromise the joint a little too much. So by putting some veneer on a piece of um, plywood, I was able to then glue the panel itself to the frame. So I'm not just relying on that what single dovetail that you'll see here in a little while um, holding that, uh, that component together. And then I started milling up uh, components for the two doors. So styles and rails, and here I'm working on the panels. So these panels will be two boards glued together. They're not book match panels, but they all came from the same board. And I happened to find this really um, figured piece of white oak. And although the whole piece couldn't be made out of figured white oak, uh, the panel of a door is an excellent place to highlight a special board. So if you're working on a project, and it might be too expensive or you have a limited quantity of something like this, a door panel is a great way to add a lot of visual interest to your furniture. And then I began working on the joinery for the doors. So after creating um, the groove that the panel will sit in, I went back with the router and um, deepened the mortises that for the haunched mortise and tenon joinery. And cut everything to length and width. And you'll notice I'm not using the dado stack here. That's really not because one method's better than the other, but when you're um, trying to work quickly, sometimes setting up the dado stack um, just takes too long. So it's nice to have a lot of options in your toolbox. And in this case, I just use the tenoning uh, jig and then here I'm cutting the haunches for the haunched um, part of the tenon. And a few swipes of the shoulder plane. I guess that's the rabbiting block plane um, that fits the tenon to the joint. This all came together really nice. The key here is just make sure when you're using those hand tools to keep everything nice and flat so that don't get any twist in the door. And then with the joinery cut, I could go back and then fit the panels to the grooves. And then the last moving component of this piece is going to be the pull-out tray. And it just gets a single dovetail because I needed to keep the tray as shallow as possible. So I used a combination of the router table to cut the tail board. And then the pin board I cut on the table saw with the miter gauge um, turned at an angle to cut those uh, tails. And I like using this method. It, it gives me a little more flexibility in the size and shapes of my dovetails. So... It's not completely hand cut, it's not completely machine cut, but it gives me a lot of options. So I go back here and um, use a uh, fret saw to cut out the waist of the tails. 
and then clean up the shoulder with chisels and any fitment that needed to be done I cleaned up with a chisel as well to get a um, properly fitting joint. Then I could go back from there and cut the groove, which will accept the panel. So this is a three quarter inch dado stack. Um, cut in a shallow groove. I didn't need this to be very deep because the panel's gonna get glued solid anyway. Um, this almost is kind of like a big picture frame in a way. So the last big detail of this piece is a big roundover that goes on the outside edge of both the front and back frames. So I'm flushing up the frame components now. I already did this on the um, mating piece to the case. That was already flushed, but I needed this to be flushed so then I can then go back with this big um, half inch roundover. And this is the part that really kind of lends itself to the Danish modern design. It has a lot of like modern elements in that it's very linear and straight, but that big round over is um, just a real telltale sign of Danish or like mid-century modern furniture. And the last piece is finishing. So I finished everything with Osmo Pollock Soil, the um, gloss version. I really like the gloss version. It just seems like it builds faster or builds a little thicker film. And I think I added uh, three coats of this piece, but it just buffs on with a uh, buffing pad and then you come back and buff off any excess after letting it sit for a few minutes and Two to three coats will give you a nice natural finish with um, a good amount of sheen And here are a few glamour shots. So with modern furniture, my goal is always to add interest. I feel like modern furniture can be a little too linear and rectangular. So in this piece, you'll notice uh, a lot of small details that really help draw you in and add a lot of interest and character. Along with using grain in the appropriate way, having more flowing grain in the panels and more straight grain, and components that don't need to expand and contract, I think you end up with a piece that is modern in form, but still has a lot of interest and can fit in pretty much any home. So if you like this build and you find it interesting or helpful, I hope you like, subscribe, and follow. And until next time, happy woodworking.